What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel where we break down tattoos sent in by you and hopefully give you a tip or two to make your tattoos just a little bit better. This week's all about apprentices, so sit tight and let's get to it. Once again, welcome back. If you guys could please hit that subscribe button as we do push out new fun tattoo content every week and you're not gonna wanna miss it. But as I said before, this one's all about apprentices, so let's check out this first submission sent in by Gillian out of Scotland. Gillian, you mentioned in the email that you've been tattooing for about seven months now and you sent in this sweet little crab. You also mentioned in the email that you wanna pursue traditional tattooing and you know this isn't quite traditional, but let's see where we can push it. The first thing I noticed, even if I wasn't trying to make this super traditional, is the lack of skin tone coming through, something I would really like to see. And I would have liked to see that skin tone showing through on all the black and even in some of the oranges. You could still use a lot of those heavy blacks, but when you come up on that top outline, you just wanna leave a little bit of room to breathe. And this will make it just a little more interesting and definitely a lot more traditional. I also noticed that there's a lot of patchy areas in the black and I think that's just the way that you're shading. You should be shading in layers rather than just trying to pack it all in. For seven months your outlines really aren't bad but that outline around that right claw just really grabs your attention. It's a bit thicker than all the rest of the outlines and it goes up just a bit too high. Speaking of going too far I did note a couple areas that you kind of went outside the line with those colors or even pushed over those black outlines with some of that yellow making it not as clean. But as an apprentice of seven months that's to be expected and cleanliness is only going to come with time, but maybe just slow down a little bit when you get to those tighter areas. But as I said before, as an apprentice of seven months, really not too bad. Thank you so much, Gillian, for sending that in. All right, the next tattoo sent in is from Aster, and Aster, you sent in this little centipede lady face looking thing. Now, initially, I'd say this tattoo is probably a more difficult one for an apprentice to pull off because all these little faces have to be identical. All this little detail, especially within the nose and mouth, if you do one thing wrong, it's definitely gonna show. But it does seem like you pulled this one off quite well. There are just a couple areas that I wanna point out. The first one being, I am a fan of the skin tone that you have showing through these legs. However, they're not all the same. These legs at the top have a little bit more shade than the ones at the bottom. And again, since these are supposed to be identical, it's really easy to see. But again, leaving that skin tone in the legs just makes for a more interesting piece and it should heal a bit easier. When it comes to the lady faces, I think you pretty much nailed it because they're all pretty identical. I do think there are some areas of red that went a bit too far, but for the most part, they are indistinguishable. I do think you could have gone without all those shades by the chin because it just leaves them a little bit messy. However, I think this is a really rad design and great execution. Keep up the good work, Esther, and thank you so much for sending that in. All right, the next one sent in is from Chris Chan out of Texas, and Chris, you sent over this little piece of pottery with some flowers sticking out of the top. For the most part, this tattoo is done fairly well, and even though there's not much to it, for someone who's only been tattooing about a year, it seems like your outline technique is pretty damn solid. But what the f is up with that little arrowhead looking leaf down there? Sorry, pardon my language, but eh, come on. It's just pretty distracting and doesn't really look like a leaf should look. I did notice that the other leaf on the bottom looks pretty similar, but it's masked a lot better because of all those outlines around it. It would have been a lot easier for you if you just finished off that leaf and it would have looked a lot cleaner as well. I would try to make your shades a little more consistent, especially when it comes to those little detail areas inside the flowers to the left. It seems like some of those shades stop before those lines and some of the other shades go beyond those lines. So just slow down, take your time, and and everything will look a lot better. Again, for the most part, I think you've got a pretty solid understanding of your outlines, aside from those couple little squiggles, but it's just the shading that's throwing it off for me. Make sure you shape out those shades where they belong and not just throw them in there anywhere because you feel like there's too much empty space. I do think you chose a great design, especially for an apprentice, as it gives you lots of opportunities to practice outlines and shading. I think you just need to get better control of your mag, learn how to shape those things out, and get an understanding of how light and shadow work, even when it comes to a simple design like this. But overall, nice job, Chris. Thank you so much for sending that in. All right, real quick, I wanna take a break and give a shout out to the sponsor of our channel, Mad Rabbit. Mad Rabbit is a tattoo aftercare company that has something for everyone. Whether you're a new tattooer or a longtime veteran, they've got you covered. So head on over to madrabbit.com and check out all they have to offer. And be sure to use code PONY20 to save 20% off your entire order. All right, let's get back to it. All right, the next one sent in is from Taylor Snyder out of Columbus, Ohio. And Taylor, you mentioned in your email that you've been tattooing for about five months now, and you sent over this cute little cactus tattoo. And again, just like the last few tattoos we've seen, you chose a great design that isn't overly complicated and gives you lots of opportunities to practice fundamentals. I'm so proud of you guys. The one thing I will say is I wish there was a thicker outline around the cactus or flower rather than that thicker outline being around the sun in the background. It just puts our focus on the background instead of the cactus and flower in the foreground where it should be. Had you added a thicker outline around the body of the cactus, I think it would have just made those smaller details that you used in the needles that much cooler. Now that taper on the right arm of the cactus does look a little bit weird, but what do I know? There's not many cacti in Chicago. The colors in the flower and the leaves are pretty great, and I think they really hit the mark when we're talking about traditional tattoos. Even the red in the background is a great choice because it adds a lot of contrast to that green. Just not a big fan of that outline, especially because it looks oblong. 
But overall, only tattooing for five months, I think you are right where you need to be. Thank you so much, Taylor, for sending that in. Next up, we've got a tattoo sent in by Ben, who's been on the skin for four months. And Ben, you sent over this statuesque face with some really nice shading. I know I should probably know what this is, and I'm certain you guys are gonna let me know anyway. This is Educate Pony Time. But as I was saying, you've got some really nice values here, and I think my favorite part about this tattoo is that shadow that's being cast onto the face from that hair. It just seems like there's multiple levels of black happening here, and I really like it. And the same thing could be said for that shadow coming off the chin and casting that shadow onto the neck. It's just got a lot of nice shape. Even the shades that are going onto the face are just nice, soft, and subtle. You've got some nice line work happening on the left side of the face, and you've got a little extra line work on the nose. <laughs> what happened, buddy? <laughs> I will say that the top part of this tattoo seems a bit unfinished, and I think it could have been a bit darker. It's just not really matching the rest of the tattoo. I do wish that planet, or whatever that is at the bottom, wasn't there, as it's making those lines to the left of the face look a bit messy. And I know they're supposed to be purposely messy, but I think they would have looked a lot cleaner had that not been there, or if that circle was a bit more perfect. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with this tattoo, Ben, and there's not really much I can say about it, other than finish that top. But thank you so much for sending that in and allowing me to take a peek. Up next, we've got one sent in from Anton out of Sweden, and you've been tattooing for about a year. You mentioned in your email that you mostly paint in color, so when you're tattooing in black and gray, you feel outside your comfort zone and you get lost using values instead of colors. You also sent in some color work as well that you'd like some critiques on, and I think I can help you out with that. As far as the black and gray tattoo goes, I think you could have gotten away with just four tones on this tattoo. Your solid black, your three-quarter black, your one-quarter black, and your two-drop or very light wash. I think that would have given you a wider range of contrast when it comes to a tattoo like this, and you wouldn't get those areas that are becoming lost next to each other. Like if you were to use a darker shade in the middle of this wing here, it would have given you a nicer contrast between these two light sides, and would have just made for a more interesting piece overall. Because other than that very dark bottom part of that wing, the rest of the wing just comes off very flat. And even when it comes to the roses, is it seems like you're only using one or two shades, which can be doable if you put them in the right place. Understanding how light and shadow works could have really made these roses more three-dimensional, and really put some practice into your flowers because you're gonna be doing a lot of them. I'm sure of it. And if you haven't seen my rose tutorial, check that out right here. Now, when it comes to this color tattoo, you did mention that you're more comfortable with color tattoos. However, I think you're having the same issues here as you are with your black and gray tattoos. And that's finding the correct values within your colors. Sometimes colors can be a crutch because although two colors can look good next to each other, when you put them in black and gray, you realize that there's not a lot of contrast happening. So in this case, I would have used a lighter blue with a deeper red just to give it that contrast. Even when it comes to the wings, if you wanted to use that darker blue, I would have faded it off into a much lighter gray, again, just giving you more contrast. When it comes to the flower, adding some browns or darker oranges to that yellow would have not only added some more contrast, but it would have also added some more interest and depth overall. Knowing the value scale of your colors is only going to help you in the long run. And one way to do that is take a picture of your inks. See how these colors relate next to each other. By doing that, it'll make your choices in color a lot easier and make your tattoos that much more dynamic. Now aside from color choices, let's talk about that bird's belly because it looks like he's been hanging out too long at the worm buffet, if you know what I'm saying. It just has a very weird shape and doesn't make a lot of sense. It seems like it cuts off too soon before it hits that tail. And the same thing could be said for the back of the bird. If we follow that line on the top of the bird all the way down, it just kind of disappears. If you just added a little line to the back of that bird, I think it would have made a lot more sense, although he'd still be a thick boy bird. I'm not sure what's going on with the wings, but there are a lot of funky elements happening here. So I would have made sure that I had a rock solid design on paper first before going to skin. Then worry about your colors and values. But Anton, I do appreciate you so much for sending that over. All right, everybody, that's gonna be it for the critiques, but you know I gotta give you my favorite tattoo that was sent in this week. But before I do that, I do wanna say that I'm so very excited to see that all the apprentices that sent in tattoos this week chose designs that were perfect examples of what apprentices should be working on. We see it all too often. Apprentices are excited to get on skin and try these crazy intricate pieces and fail, Miserably. So good job to everyone. But there can only be one favorite, and I think this week Ben sent in the best one. There are just so many features that I love about this tattoo, especially for only being an apprentice of four months. And although not perfect, Ben seems to show great control and understanding for laying down a solid tattoo. Knowing when and where to put those darker tones next to those highlights is just something we don't see a whole lot of when it comes to apprentice work. It seems you've got a lot of potential, and it'll be nice to see where your work is at in just a few short years. So once again, congratulations Ben on being my favorite this week. All right, now I want to put a spotlight on somebody who I think you should all be following, and a lot of you already may know. Season 10 Ink Master winner out of Denver, Colorado, Josh Payne. Something we talked about this week is understanding color tones and values, and Josh has an exceptional understanding of color relationships and how they work together. He's done it a few times on his Instagram page where he desaturates his color tattoos and you see exactly what we're talking about here. Having great contrast makes for great tattoos, and looking through his portfolio, you see nothing but great tattoos. So do yourself a favor, head on over to his Instagram page, give him a follow, and let him know I sent you. All right, guys, that's 
that's going to be it. I want to thank each and every one of you who submitted your work. And remember, if you'd like to see your tattoos critiqued on this series, you can do so by sending them to ponycritiques at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys next week.